All right, here we go. Good morning and happy Sunday. It's December 3rd and I'm planning on doing the Advent of Code challenge for today. Show my screen, we'll start jamming. Here we go, D3. Let's get this guy up here. Three. This guy up and keep track of where we're at. Gear ratios. Where am I? Three gear ratios. Touch input text main Python, and then we'll start jamming on these guys. Right, seven fifteen and eight a.m. It's time to shine. Read the problem statement. Okay, so the game plan is this. Let's see, it's 7.16. Took about one minute to read the problem statement. All right, read problem statement. Oops. Game plan is this. All right, so we'll do... Just so wanna do uh, DFS. For IJ cell with a symbol in it. To find adjacent, oops, adjacent numbers to be accumulated and to total T to be returned, right? Okay, so that's the game plan. Then let's, let's implement this based on the small input first, just to make sure it's correct. That input and we'll parse it. So basically we'll parse it per, per line into an input matrix A, which is a two dimensional array. And then we'll, we'll parse it based on these symbols. The symbol would be anything but size a digit and a dot. Right, okay. With open input text. Let's do this. Well, it's input or line and input. It's an array. Input in the line is an array of characters and def go i j for keep track of what's been seen as a set. Oh. 
for I n. Let's do this. M and n are the rows and columns of a correspondingly. Range oops. M zero to n minus one inclusive and for j in range. N zero to n minus one inclusive. Go. Part one be our total T. If I J seen. Turn. Otherwise, let's do this. If a sub i sub j, it's not a digit, is, is digit, it's not a digit and a sub i sub j is not a dot then it must be a symbol. Okay, so we started a symbol and then we'll go to all the cardinal directions and then try to parse the number, right? Reading a number, numbers only go left to right at least. It doesn't, numbers don't seem to be going up to down. So that makes it easier at least. Okay, for U, V in the values adjacent to IJ, Up, up and to the right, up and to the left. Up and to the left, up and center, up and to the right. Right. Down and to the right, down, down and to the left, to the left. If U V is not in scene, seen to add U V. It's in scene will continue. Otherwise we'll add it. And then if a sub i sub j or u v, right? U v. Do this though. Does it need to be a recursive function? And does it? Just check all adjacent lines. Wondering if I should do it the other way around. So here we're finding a symbol and we're looking for a number. What if we find numbers and then look for symbols? Would that make our life easier? 
Each number could be associated with the cells it occupies. this and do, do a linear scan from left to right. We'd always read the numbers, I guess, right? Okay, yeah, let's let's just do this over again, right? This is kind of junk. Let's start over. Start over and make objects. I think it makes sense to have an object, a digit would be an object, we'll lead it from left to right. Track of last, okay. I do a um, linear scan or a quadratic scan. Scan of the Input matrix A from left to right per row. Right, make object for each number. Object will contain the number value, and the object will also contain the cells, right? IJ cells, the number, right, the digits occupy. And then some helper function to determine is adjacent to a symbol. Okay, so that's the game plan, right? Let's do this again. Just call it number, how about? I use zero self dot cells. That I don't know if we need that help function or not. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I guess so. We can count as a total. You'll call it. It's adjacent to the cells. We'll count it as a value. Otherwise, if it's not, then we won't count it. Or IJ self dot cells or UV in all adjacent cells. Just grab this so I don't have to type it again. So the adjacent cells to IJ. If they're in bounds. And A sub U sub V. It's not a digit, it's not a dot. What is digit and A sub U sub V? dot uh, 
just do this. Value of our self as long as there's an asterisk next to us. Otherwise, we're just returning zero. If there's no asterisk next to us, there's our number class. Okay, we still do need to read the input. So grab this. Right, shift it over and stick that there. Otherwise, let's go zero. Should just do number. Last equals a number. Value equals last dot value. Shift it over. Oops. Plus the current value. Cast into an integer. Last dot cells. Dot add ij. Numbers be an array. That's number numbers. start append. Last uh, copy. I want to make a deep copy of it, right? Then reset last. We'll just take it like that. That should be okay, right? So did you do that? To list of cells. Okay, that looks good. And then take the value of it. As long as there's a symbol next to it, return the value. Okay. So print. Part one be the total nouns sum of num dot val for num num and nums which number of numbers. Value is embedded within the class. Okay, I think that looks good, right? Let's see what happens. Let's run it. Uh oh, it doesn't have a copy. Well, how do we do a deep copy then? Is it clone or something? Python 3 deep copy object. I don't want to stick a, a like a reference in there. Copy dot oh copy dot copy. 
deep copy. To import copy, I guess, right? Import copy, okay. B dot deep. All right, I want to stick a deep copy in there. Okay, let's try this again. Uh oh, he said, oh, my cheese out of bounds. What? My cheese, where is it complaining about? It's line 61. Coming in, what? String X out of range. I thought. What? Now let's do this. Print the input array A and M and N as well. Oh, there's a new line. What? If you want to strip it. Rip a white space. Okay, well that did it. Four five three three. Okay, let's see what happens. Four five three three is too low. Okay, so too low. Seven three six. Holy cow! It took twenty minutes. I get the wrong answer. Low, so we're not counting enough. Page left, up, up into the right, right, down into the right, down, down at the left, left. It looks good. UV number, number dot value. Oh, wait, hold on. It's it's too low. So we're seeing four, three, six, one. Four, three, six, one. And I'm getting four, three, or oh, four, five. Oh, okay. This is this input. I need this input. <laughs> okay. Oops, that'll make a difference. But still, it's not right. Right, the answer is not right. It should be four three. Hold on, if it's not right on the small input, it'll be right not right on the big input too, right? Yeah, here I'll, I'll just print value each time we find one. Then Let's see what's going on here. What? Value, uh oh, num dot value, uh -huh. invoke the value function, right? Okay, four, three, six, one, that's good. Okay. That's a little bit tricky, and then we have to use the value function, right, in order to say, Let's do this. Let's do okay. How about turn true and false? I think this will be easier to read and understand. Okay, so if it's okay, then we can do something, right? Num.val for num and nums if num dot okay. Shift 
4361 looks good. Let's get rid of these prints and then let's submit it based on the big input. Okay, let's see what happens. 739. Yay, okay, 739, it's accepted. 739. Oops, All right, I had a couple mistakes. All right. So first mistake is that I, I added all values from num val rather than using the value function, right? So this I determined is like difficult, like, um, not difficult, but difficult to understand, right? Not not concise or simple as possible, right? So basically, we refactored, oops, refactored the code to remove the value function since it is closely related to the, the val member, right? And instead, create an okay function, which is self-documented, right? So we'll include the value as long as it's okay, which makes it more explicit of what's going on rather than kind of hiding, oh yeah, we add the value to return zero here, which is kind of clever code, right? So this is, this looks better. Okay, 741, we'll start on Oops, hold on, 739. 739 is accepted. Yay. And then 741 would be part two. 7 to exactly two numbers. Okay, interesting. So gear ratios, the game plan, right? Accumulate. Uh, X. There's only two? Exactly two. Okay, so if there's three, then we don't count it. Holy cow, okay. This could be tricky. It has to be adjacent to exactly two part numbers.
I guess how do I want to code this? So I don't have to refactor too much. I don't need to keep track of the cells, do I? I do. Keep track of adjacent cells. Okay, so let's start by going through and looking at each year, I guess. Gears. Once we have all the gears, then we can look at the we have eight adjacent spots. Three, three, one, two. The tricky part is we want to count this as one instead of two, right? It seems to be the trickiest part. Left and right are simple, but up and down, there's ambiguous cases. I guess it count as two if and only if there's one here and one there, but not one here. There's one here and one there. That's a simple part. So there's only a couple of cases. I want to express this in code, though, concisely. Well, if there's a digit in any of these three, we know there's at least one. The only times there's two is if there's a digit in the left and the right, followed by space in the middle. Right, so let's do this. Here. Here we just have a cell. Yeah, I don't need that, right? Maybe multiples of gears encapsulated. Yeah, whatever. We can get rid of this if we don't need it. Each gear should have IJ cell. I don't know what to call them. The parts, I guess. The up and the down.
Let's reboot. Right, this could do. It can have just a reference to the numbers as gears. Oh, yeah, actually, let's just create a set. The gear will just have a set of numbers around it. Gear. Have those numbers. Okay, yeah, let's just do this. We don't even need the IJ cell of each gear, right? We just need a set of numbers around the gear. So let me parse the input. Okay, that's a gear. Digit. So if a sub i sub j is equal to a gear, let's take this one to T1. T1 is okay. T2, actually, let's just do this. Yeah, it's a gear total, Years, just be an array, fine, right? Years not append IJ. Years will be the IJ cells. For each gear, we'll have for two total then. For I chain gears. With all adjacent cells UV. in range. So you should be uh, is digit. Mm. 
we knew it's one of the numbers then, right? Which we can take. Set. Might be able to take them more than once, right? You know, reverse map for just go through all the numbers for num and nums. I don't think there's that many. If uv is in num dot cells, then we'll take it. Take dot add the number, and we just add a reference to it is fine. If the length of take is equal to two, then we'll do part two. Let's do this part one. Here's T1. How about T1? Oops, T1 equals this guy. T2, zero. Oops, T2 plus equals. No, oh, hold on, take, 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 first value of the set and the second value of the set. At T2. Let's see, goes the sum of it and take or num and take, right? Val, product x ray. That Python would he add on um, multiply. Function. Similar to some function. Yeah, this would want a product product. Put it on ball. Pump two is our Dot product produce it using the lambda might work, okay. Use not to find what is this thing funk tools?
Punk tools. Juice. That's the mm -hmm. so. All right, and whatever. Two. It's a big number. Let's see what happens. Yay, okay, that worked. Got a cool little picture coming on here. And there's part one and part two, so that's all she wrote. Okay, so it seems like decent code. So we have a, a number class that has the value in the cells. The value. the value directly here, create a deep copy. So if you don't want to go iterate through all the numbers, we could make a reverse mapping too from the cell to the number. That's some additional complexity though. I guess I don't really need it. It runs fast enough, right? Larger input though, you might want to make that optimization. Apply it. Let's do this. Writer.mole. A little bit more straightforward. That looks good. Okay, so part one and part two. T two, T one is this guy, T two accumulate last nums and gears. Last is the last number. Gears is something I just depend. Yeah, okay, that looks good enough. Let's do this. That there, stick that there. And then, yeah, we're done. So it's 805. It's been a little bit less than an hour. That looks pretty decent, though. The number is okay if it has a symbol. There's cells and a value. Open the input. And 
stick this at the top. Open up the input, here's our number. Move through the input, populate the numbers, populate the gears, accumulate the total of numbers, accumulate the total of gears. Okay. Looks good. So there's our DS main. Okay. Oops. I want to grab oops, this, this guy. Okay, and then we'll stick it here, day three, using the same format as day two. With this later. Three, day three, day three code. Okay, yeah, that looks good. Have to read me. Okay, and then I'll save this, post it on YouTube, and then update the screen share next. All right, catch y'all later.